Hey everyone, and welcome back to my completionist playthrough of the Baldur's Gate saga with SCS. And in this episode, we're going to progress the main storyline here in the Underdark. But first, let's level up Kirinai, and then we're also going to have some words with Simeaz and his cronies, who are actually stationed nearby. So, level 22 for Kirinai, and we're going to continue leveling up set traps. And I am going to max it, and then continue with stealth. Even though with her Mercy Killer ring equipped, she is already above 100 uh, skill in set traps. But uh, we don't want to rely on this ring, and she's not going to have it equipped forever, as is going to be the case with these Boots of Stealth. So right now, with those items equipped, her thieving skills are just stellar all, all across the board, but in a couple of levels she's going to be, be able to achieve such numbers all on her own, without any uh, thief skill boosting equipment. And also, just in time, recently she has unlocked access to the best type of trap at level 21, and these ones can occasionally kill someone outright, although the saving throw bonus here is rather generous on them. Um, however, the 20 poison damage that they offer have no save, and uh, they can also deal some decent missile damage on top of all that. So we're actually going to have a pretty good opportunity to showcase uh, these traps soon. Yes, and now best. let's have a talk with Simiaz, a talk that's not going to end well for him. And uh, since Imoen didn't really have a chance to shine in that recent encounter with the Elder Brain. We're going to use one of her tricks here. And also yes. I think what we're going to do is... Uh, Edwin, for once, is going to use some of his buffs and protections on himself. And uh, unleash one of his Sunfires as well, I think. We're going to have some some uh, fun with spells here. Yeah, so let's have... Uh, Sinashira and Edwin approach. Let's actually keep Kirinai in stealth, because I think at least Simiaz is going to have some buffs that we will be able to dispel with her um, Detect Illusion, and then the rest of our party is just going to support us from range. You live? The Illithids let you go? Astounding. Unless you are in league with them, I warn you, if you serve them, you will share their fate. Oh, he is just too much. This is actually a pretty uh, funny conversation option here, but let's let's be a little bit more level-headed, I guess. And uh, now he's going to reveal his true intentions, that he actually hoped that we would fall in the Illithid city, and that they would be able to reclaim the stolen silver sword at a later point. But why is this blade so important? The blade is a silver sword, a weapon entrusted to the greatest of our leaders by our queen herself. It cannot be given or sold. To do so means death. Your words may dance as they will, but we know Saman Havarian had it, and we know it was given to you. It will be returned. And you actually can return the blade to them, and that's not even the last opportunity to do so. Here we could use this conversation option. But uh, actually, after all we've been through, uh, with no help uh, on Simiaz's part, uh, you know, leaving us all alone in that illithid city, we're actually going to respond with this one. And also, of course, to later on be able to craft the weapon and uh, showcase it in our playthrough. No, it will not be returned. It is now my property, although I fail to see the appeal of it. <laughs> and this is going to insult them so much that, of course, this is going to uh, end in a fight. And let's actually give them a moment to to go hostile and get their, their pre-buffs. Alright, so there they go. Simias has some, some buffs, stone skins, improved invisibility, status, minor globe. Um, and he can actually cast some spells, so let's yes. try to overwhelm him with some physical damage. Let's start detecting traps, although this range might not be enough. I will move closer with Kirinai in a second. But here let's actually unleash our triple skull trap into these Githyanki. And Edwin is going to cast a quick Sunfire on top of that once this hits. Uh, both Edwin and Senashira are protected both from magical damage and fire damage, so uh, this is going to be... this should be pretty effective. Let's see, one of them died already, and uh, now we can unleash our Sunfire. They had a little remove magic uh, that was ineffective on anyone, fortunately, and... Alright, now we've... I think we just cut through... Um, his mirror images. So let's just finish this now. And this one really resilient Githyanki is still still alive, but he is way less important than Simias himself. 
All right, so he has a minor sequencer with invisibility and mirror images. Let's detect some traps and in the meantime try to deal with this guy. All right, Simeaz is already out. He just revealed himself and now he has everything dispelled. Unfortunately, Sinashira lost her stone skins. And there there you go, Simeaz. That's what you get for not uh, cooperating with us. And these uh, Githyanki actually has some decent potions with them. And also this guy in our fight against the Kuatoa on the bridge, the, the one guy that ventured way up here and to the north, we actually didn't loot his bolts. And so we are going to be able to get them in a second. Right, and we're going to be able to scavenge some nice potions from, from the Githyanki here. And um, before we... The, the, the last thing we're going to do before going to uh, the Cavern of Adalon that uh, Goldander Blackenrock told us about, now and now that we have the Light Gem that can light the way, we're just going to quickly sell some stuff. I uh, thought about it a little bit in between recordings. So we're just going to get rid of some potions that we don't really need, like these potions of insulation. Uh, these little potions of healing we're not going to need. And also I'm going to sell all 31 of these uh, potions of hill giant strength that give us 19 strength. And we have all that much uh, or all that much strength um, from items. And of course we can get more with different spells and such. And also very soon we're going to get access to another potion vendor and we're going to be able to get even more of these uh, better potions of strength. So we can definitely get rid of these. And also the way we have our party set up for the rest of Shadows of Am, we're not going to need these potions of agility. And uh, that's going to be it for now. And also these potions of invulnerability we can sell. We're going to get more in the future. And of course we already have a stack of 24 of them still. Alright, so now we can actually... Yeah, if I unpause we can go to Adelon's lair and see what kind of person she is supposed to be and how is she supposed to be able to um, allow us uh, to gain entry into the drow city and track John Arenicus inside if he is still inside yes welcome welcome to my lair i have watched your progress with great interest so there's Adelon, and she is a silver dragon, which is actually one of the few types of dragons that's uh, good aligned. And uh, she is ultimately a good character, but she still retains her dragon ego. Uh, she's pretty insufferable, <laughs> very arrogant, and uh, I don't like her very much, but uh, we are going to cooperate with her. Uh, she is in a desperate, desperate situation that we're going to learn about, um, not only from the conversation with her, but there's actually a cool follow-up. Um, once we're going to be inside the Drow City. And at this point, you know, this is not a big spoiler that, of course, we are going to be able to go inside. But um, anyway, since she is pretty difficult for me to like, um, and we know, of course, uh, how how dragons operate, what their, their mindset is, and stands towards mortals. <laughs> so uh, we're going to get right down to business. We're not going to be too friendly with her. Yeah, do not presume that you may simply ask and receive what you need. I am not as tolerant as others of my kind. And um, also, if we had chosen a different conversation option when we talked to Goldander, uh, and if we asked him, why doesn't Adelon uh, help the Swerf Neblin with their predicament with that Balrog, <laughs> or Balor, and they, uh, they had clearly no chance against, uh, he would respond with something along the lines that uh, she values people that can help themselves, more. So, like, what good are you here? Like, she should be perfectly aware that this Firth Neblin stood no chance against that Balor, and should be able to just, you know, quickly help them. But, yeah. Anyway, she refers to herself as the Guardian, and I have done my duty as well as I have been able for many a century. I was not the first, but I know the history. Yeah, so Eamon is awed by this creature. Yes, yes, of course, but I have little time for your starry-eyed fawning. Listen well to what I say. My charge is the elven ruins above, an ancient temple that marks the gateway to the Underdark. There are others elsewhere, but this was the first. The temple marks where the elves of Dark Hearts first descended, truly separating uh, from elvenkind and becoming drow. And yeah, this place actually has a lot of historical significance. Also, the, the city, uh, the drow city itself, because, um, you know, as she said, this was where 
the drow descended into the Underdark after being banished by the surface elves. The drow keep the outpost of Ustnatha here as a symbol, one that is fought over regularly, though I have governed the hostilities and seen peace for decades as, as a time. Also, as we're going to learn, Ustnatha in drow language actually means the first, because it was their first city where they actually gathered up and um, made a settlement for themselves after that banishment. But there has been a crime here recently, and I can no longer honor my commitment. I will ask your assistance, and in return, I will aid you. And even if we respond favorably to that, she's like, Silence! I will tell you when you may speak. This is a very important matter, and I will not be interrupted. And even Jahira here is like, you know, Of course, my lady Adelon, Seneshua, do keep quiet. Like, you little traitor! <laughs> like, let me remind you, Jahira, who is in charge here, and, uh... <laughs> that you should keep your control freak urges to yourself. Anyway, the drow respected the borders of this place for centuries, only venturing out for sport and small, small skirmishes. That was the balance. The two you seek, this Bodhi and John Arenicus, I believe they have made a deal with the drow for their own safe passage and offered a way to tip the scales against their elven enemy. And now she's talking out of, out of turn herself, like, speak only when spoken to, Jahira. Practice what you preach. You little beastie. <laughs> anyway, you may ask why I do not extend my influence. I cannot. Irenicus bargained with my most prized possession. He violated my lair and stole from me. They have taken my eggs. And of course, every dragon cares for their eggs uh, in a very special manner, but there's actually going to be more to this whole story and that we're going to be able to learn about uh, a little bit later. So <laughs> we're going to get, go with this one. Brilliant way to take the tooth out of your bite. I have been informed that to move from my lair is to cause the destruction of my eggs. It is the final straw in a long list of atrocities I have been witness to. You must retrieve them for me. Do this, and I will reveal a safe escape route to leave the Underdark, one that emerges close to where Arenicus plots his next move. In addition to placing your near your target, I will also make a gift of an item from my hoard. It will be powerful and worthy of your service. And it absolutely isn't worthy, and it absolutely isn't powerful. This is actually an insult, this item that she's going to give us. It's so bad at this point in the game. I don't know what they were thinking and what's, what Adelon has been thinking. Ugh. Anyway, when it comes to Adelon as well, um, if we had chosen to go with a more evil way here, uh, we would be able to fight her and uh, actually receive a vial of um, silver dragon blood, which is needed to complete the enchantment uh, for that f uh, flesh armor. If you remember the whole pro plot with uh, Regik Heidsman and his contact in Imnesvale, that would be able to finish the whole, uh, the whole armor. So, of course, you would get that silver dragon blood from her. But, anyway, let's continue with here, with the conversation here. I, re I realize the danger of the request, but I do not ask you to simply assault the place. No, there is a much more subtle way to succeed. You will take the identity of a group of drow I dispatched recently, a party from another city destined for Ustnatha. Yeah, so we will become drow. This is going to be a magical transformation. You will be able to pass among the drow with ease. They will not see through the fiction I create. When you arrive at the gate, tell them you are from the city of Chednasad, or Chednasad, and that you seek sanctuary within Ustnatha. And of course, uh, you know, if you're not very knowledgeable about the drow, uh, and how they are in the Forgotten Realm y uh, universe, um, you know, th this is pretty risky. Like, uh, you might not know how to behave as a drow, uh, to not be suspicious. And she's just like, improvise. <laughs> they are in the turmoil of war at the moment and will overlook much. They will not turn away extra hands. You will not be discovered by any other means than your own mistakes, so be careful not to make them. So let's this let's get this over with. It is done. You now resemble the denizens of the Drow City, complete with a house insignia that will not draw undue attention. I suggest you act like Drow when speaking to anyone you meet. You will also have knowledge of the language of the Drow, and your speech will be heard as though you have spoken their dark tongue all your life. The illusion will last as long as it needs to. Trying to leave the city through their main gate to the surface will dispel the magic. You will be on your own against impossible odds. I am sorry, but I must protect my interests. The only safe escape is through my influence once my eggs are recovered. I will do what I can. And she tells us to use the name Veldrin, which is a commonly used name among the drow. And uh, yeah, now we we look like drow, we are going to sound like drow. And uh, as she said, this is going to be the perfect disguise that will allow us entry to 
Ustnata. And um, before we actually go there, we are going to talk with some other denizens of uh, this part of the Underdark, and because some of them are going to have a different reaction to us now. And uh, not even that, uh, but uh, Karlig, the Duergau, D Duergar merchant, is actually going to have a different stock. And uh, this is when I mentioned that you could set up a situation to actually do a large, large stealing spree on one set of potions of Master Thievery, because you could progress, you know, kill the Balor, progress with uh, the Adalon disguise here. You could drink your potions of thievery uh, right now and steal with Vithal after this whole elemental portals thing. The steal from Karlig, uh, steal from Thurndal here, and steal from the uh, Drow merchants that are going to be present in Usnata. However, uh, Karlig's uh, assortment of items is different, so you still have to uh, you know, or it's nice to to buy some stuff out of his previous selection as well. So it's it's kind of nice uh, the way we've done in this playthrough, I think, uh, with uh, you know stealing from the Sahuagin King and then extending that uh, thieving spree onto Karlig's first inventory and you know all of the other denizens here. And now we're going to actually uh, drink our potions of master thievery on Kiranai once again and uh, do a little stealing spree again. And this one actually is going to make a lot of sense from a role-playing perspective um, when it comes to stealing from the drow. Of course, we don't want to increase their wealth. We're just going to temporarily, you know, place these items uh, actually in that bag of holding and not on the ground, <laughs> just in case, <laughs> knowing uh, how I operate with, with those. Uh, but yeah, of course, we don't want to increase the wealth of the... Uh, of the drow, and we want to deprive them of uh, as many uh, items as we can without actually giving them anything in return. And here, Karlig, uh, for hiding some of his good items from us, we're going to steal once again from him. <laughs> and, uh... Now we're actually going to have access to some pretty high-level scrolls, and what is unfortunate uh, in Shadows of Am is that uh, one very, very good level 8 spell, Spell Trigger, that of course we have encountered, um, you know, uh, from the Elder Orbs, for example, those um, triple lower resistances, unfortunately uh, Spell Trigger, which would be a level 8 spell and would be really, really useful for Sinashira, um, is not available as a static drop in Shadows of Amn. You can only buy it in Throne of Vol, and um, it is available as a very low chance random drop, but we were not so lucky in our playthrough, at least so far, and we haven't gotten access to even one spell trigger. And it is an, a just great spell that allows you to unleash three spells, much like Spell Sequencer, but up to level six. So you could go with like triple lower resistance, which is of course a really good tactic for lowering the resistance of you know, resistant enemies, some single, uh, single target like powerful enemies. You can go with a very effective strategy that way to enable your magic to succeed. You can also, you know, give yourself access to better buffs and protections, like you could have improved haste, protection from magical weapons, and like protection from magic energy on it, or like globe of in invulnerability, or uh, you know, true seeing, or tensor transformation, like the it just extends your options by a lot yes. into some some powerful stuff yeah. right but anyway we have 230 let's use that one potion of perception here as well to give her 250 and now we can go wild and as you can see Karlig this uh, uh, responds to us in a very different manner because um, pretty much most of the um, underdark races are very afraid of of the drow and uh, our responses are very fitting here. Uh, drow are... I'll give a proper description a little bit later, but they are a very evil, uh, merciless, cruel race uh, that uh, are arrogant and basically view everyone else as uh, beneath them. So here those are very proper responses to, to what Karlik said. And now he actually has access to some pretty nice potions. He has actually some more potions of master thievery that we're going to get and he actually has some nice scrolls that we did that he didn't have before so what the hell Karlig we're totally I think everyone has disintegrated but we're going to learn finger of death of course Kelvin more than kind and swords those are really nice spells whether we have them memorized or, or not 
we always appreciate scrolls of those. Yeah, Tensor's Transformation, we're going to get some scrolls for Kirinai once she can cast spells from scrolls. Globe of Invulnerability, or Invulnerability even, is uh, <laughs> even better than a Globe of Vulnerability would be. Anyway, Spell Immunities, never enough of those. Actually, let's get some Abjuration ones as well. I think he has two of each. I'm not going to go completely hardcore when it comes to all of these, but yeah, that, that's enough. The secret words next. Always nice to have. Actually, let's. Uh, okay, we still have some some slots in our inventory, but we can arrange it already. And these spells, are, I think, are going to just go to Senashira's scroll case for some learning purposes. This is going to go here. All right, and let us continue. Just a few more scrolls, and then we're going to get some few potions, even minor sequencers we can we can take, just to be able to uh, set them up on the go. Protection from fire. All right, and that I misclicked there. I wanted the other protection from fire. I think he has two. Yeah, and now that's it when it comes to uh, scrolls. Now let's get some, some potions. So these magic protection potions, of course, we're going to take. Especially since he has uh, quite a few of them, apparently. Yeah, potions of invulnerability. Th these storm giant strength ones I'm going to get. Or one of them that he had. Potions of master thievery, of course, we need. Is more like in the middle of his selection, more or less. All right, there were four of them, I think. Yeah, and uh, nothing else we really need that much. We could get ourselves some more potions of invulnerability or potions of genius, but they are not that needed. We have uh, a lot of stuff of that sort at our disposal. So thank you, Carlig, and also. This guy here is a Finderlig is going to have a different response. I do not recognize you, and I thought I knew every member of the local patrols. And of course, we're going to try to protect ourselves here. I should kill you for claiming knowledge of our routines, but I am feeling generous. <laughs> I meant no offense and did not presume to know your affairs. Um, yeah, that was close. And this is actually really good banter between Jahira and Edwin. Yeah, you heard her. Pretentious attitudes for everyone. Care to model yours, Jahira? Just so we get it right. <laughs> So good. Edwin, my man. So good. And she doesn't have a good re retort. Just responding with Valent. Unfortunately, um, Uder Morden doesn't have a different response uh, because he gives us that quest with Vithal, or at least the information about Vithal. And uh, he says the same thing. But here, in, within the Svirfneblin village, the guards here are going to be pretty afraid. Yeah, you're welcome to pass if the peace is respected. And uh, I think the innkeeper has something else to say. Mm, yes. Yeah. Oh no, I would not dream of you staying here, good drow. This place is beneath you, so far beneath. Please accept my apologies for the state of this place. There are surely better places for you to sleep. Save her as well. <laughs> anyway, uh, of course we can rest here anyway, if we want. But, alright. Without further ado, this is now the time to progress to Ustnatha. And there's going to be like a really speedy drow here uh, from kind of before. That's why he's hostile. He just kind of retreats to the to the city. But now that we have the drow disguise, the doors actually open. Normally they would be closed, and we wouldn't be able to do anything with that. So apparently there are no scheduled patrols. And uh, of course, role playing, uh, <laughs> giving our best drow impl impression here. We of course cannot say anything like "please," "I beg of you," or just you know, of course, reveal our true name. We say, stand down, male worm. I am Veldrin from the city of Ched Nassad. Let me pass. My apologies, I merely follow my duty in questioning you. You are welcome to pass, Veldrin of Ched Nassad. There would normally be an extensive questioning of you, but we were expecting your group from Ched Nassad. Your late arrival has delayed the plans of Solofine. Enter quickly, and be sure that you seek Solofine, Solofine's counsel. He is of the Male Fighters Society, will instruct you on your conduct within Ustnatha. Beware that your welcome is conditional, and that if you fail to meet with him or fail him in any other way, you will be hunted for sport by all that care to join in. The Male Fighter Society... Yeah. 
uh, we know where it? it's located and that actually already gave you, gave you a, a little uh, a little picture of uh, what the draw draw are like uh, but anyway just to give a quick description before we get on with this place uh, we can actually see its uh, its nice looks we're going to explore closer in a second but just to give a quick description the drow are of course one of the most well-known evil races in the forgotten realms universe and uh, they are structured in a in a matriarchal society split into different houses kind of like families or clans uh, that are ranked in each city according to their power and favor with Loth and um, there are constant constant schemes and wars being waged between the houses in order to ascend to a higher rank in the hierarchy and increase their status in the city and these ranks are well known within the community so every draw draw is going to be aware uh, of uh, which house is the first one which one is the second one and so on and uh, they are a cruel merciless race of course kind of uh, kind of following the principle of survival of the fittest uh, they're an extreme example of it uh, with strength ambition and mercilessness being their core values and success justifying any means to achieve it and because of that rivalries between siblings are often bloody and uh, matron mothers generally don't die of old age but uh, because they were they're assassinated by their eldest daughter who wants that position for herself and uh, all of that makes the surviving drow strong and battle ready but at the same time the constant infighting treacheries to achieve greater prestige and power make it so that they are unable to unite and most of their grand plans never come to fruition as a result of that and um, the females are clear leaders becoming priestesses of Loth, matron mothers of the houses and whatnot while the males are second category citizens though they can still achieve high status um, if they become a powerful mage or the weapons master of the house or a favored consort of the matron mother for example and finally Loth uh, she is their chief goddess and in practice really the only one worshipped by the vast majority of drow and there are some other drow gods out there but with very minuscule and secretive followings and Loth embodies all of the values I mentioned previously like evil, cunning, chaos, ruthlessness, all that uh, she's called the spider queen or queen of the demon web pits which is actually the 66th layer of the abyss that she resides in that uh, she later uh, separates into her own plane uh, but anyway, you might remember Baloth from Baldur's Gate 1 when he said no demon web pits for me <laughs> when he avoided death but uh, anyway, uh, Loth rules the drow in a tyrannical way approves of all of the scheming, scheming and evil deeds and if someone dares to defy her they meet a swift death from her followers so uh, that's the gist of it <laughs> a very nice place we're about to enter and uh, yeah, before we do anything there's going to be a little scene here how they treat their slaves and this one drow, of course, is going to be displeased with this slave's performance and kill him at a whim. But uh, now the mother, mother of this drow asks what happened. And she is not going to be pleased to hear that he disposed of that slave. <laughs> this is a, a little car caricature, even, <laughs> you know, of, of the drow. This is a really extreme example. <laughs> Like, I have other sons, and she just kills them there. Uh, but anyway, before we do anything else, let us just continue our stealing spree. And there are three drow merchants here. Uh, this one is going to have some scrolls for us. So let's uh, get to it. We can get some, some stuff that uh, we like in scroll form. He just has uh, one of each, I think. Uh, at least it seems so, so far. And I think, yeah, that's going to be the case with every spell. I think we can learn uh, the genie summon on someone. Of course, ruby rays we absolutely need. Let's just uh, get our potions in order. Alright, so that's already already full. So we're going to move some of these uh, scrolls into Senashira's scroll case. Let's actually quick save in case they have that super rare uh, reaction where they actually catch us uh, stealing from them. Yeah, Ruby Ray we always want. 
a nice dispel for spell traps. Simulacrum is very powerful. Incendiary Cloud, someone can learn. And I think Summon Fiend. And Cacko Fiend we already stole from Karlig, but let's have one Cacko Fiend for everyone. I'm not sure about Carrion Summons, if anyone needs that. And, alright, that's that's going to be it. I'm going to sort these scrolls later, I guess. And yeah, let's proceed to the other vendor. And here uh, we actually can ask about th that uh, adamantine uh, weapons and armor that uh, decay yeah, once outside of Loth's Dark Embrace. And also they spell it Loth, which is now her official name, but uh, they actually changed it in the um, you know, Forgotten Realms universe. Back in the day, she was actually spelled differently with a double L at the front. Uh, and I actually prefer that way, way more. Like, if, for example, if you uh, read the Dark Elf trilogy about Drizzt, she is spelled like that, with a double L at the front, instead of Lolf or <laughs> Ruffulf. <laughs> she, I actually prefer the, the double L at the front uh, way more, so I'm going to pronounce it like that. But, you know, officially, now after the change, uh, she is known as Lolf. Um, so yeah, on the surface, of course, the equipment uh, decays, and we can actually ask about that. And, of course, we would wish it no other way. It would be a great insult for those of another race to carry drow weapons. So we are, you know, in our human, in our true forms, we are already insulting them <laughs> by actually having scavenged their, their equipment here in the Underdrug. And we can make some questions. We have to be careful with uh, some of these people, uh, not to become too suspicious. And the drow do not make extended forays to the surface. There is nothing above that we need. We only occasionally raid for specific reasons. You should know this. So this kind of gives you a hint that you should be careful with your questions. Anyway, now uh, he has some equipment, and he has a couple of notable items here. First, the Harbinger. It's a plus three two-handed sword, which is actually more trouble than it's worth. Because of that 5% fireball chance, it's not like reliable enough that you would want to center your strategy around that. So it's more of a nuisance that sometimes it happens and you, you kind of have to protect yourself against fire or just take the damage whenever it happens. And flesh to stone against ogres, I mean, okay, <laughs> whatever. You wouldn't even want to flesh to stone ogres, you just want their loot rather than uh, turning them into stone. As if, you know, ogres at this point were a uh, a fearsome enemy. But anyway, here is a very good spear the one that, that I mentioned. So of course if you proceed quickly here into Ustnatha after the Sahuagin adventure you can get Impaler and then like five minutes later you can get Spear of Withering uh, which is a plus four enchanted spear with four poison damage. That's really nice. Um, but anyway, here is one of our big prizes. Uh, Dagger of Throwing plus three Fire Tooth. And uh, this is going to be a great upgrade for Kirinai because finally she's going to have access to a plus three ranged weapon that is going to open up uh, you know, the ability for her to actually damage them. Uh, quite a few monsters that were, you know, that, that need plus three enchantment uh, to be hurt. And also it has fire damage on it. So, you know, of course that is, that is additional damage in general and also can interrupt mages through stone skin and whatnot. And this is also, you know, fire tooth plus three, the dagger. And then we have uh, fire tooth plus four, <laughs> the crossbow. So I don't, I don't know why they aren't uh, named no differently. Question. But uh, anyway, of course, we are going to take that dagger right now. And that's going to be a nice prize for us, a nice reward for all that we've been through in these different areas of the Underdark. There we have the Sentinel plus four shield. That's going to be a little upgrade for uh, Adamant compared to his Saving Grace shield. And I think in between episodes, I'm going to change its look to um, that of Baldur's Gate 1 medium shield. But yeah, armor class plus five, just a decent, decent shield at, at what it does. And then we also have Staff of Earth, which is going to complete our trinity of these elemental staves. It can kill earth, earth elementals on hit, summon a lesser one, and another uh, source of stone to flesh. So we're going to take that. Uh, also, here they sell robes of uh, the evil Arch Magi. You know, it makes sense, of course, because essentially all drow are evil. So uh, there would be no point in <clears throat> the vendor here selling, like, you know, good aligned. <laughs> Arch Magi robes, and he also has some scrolls. So we're going to take Breach. That's always useful. I think Maze we're going to be able to learn on our other mages. And that's basically it. 
All right, so this we can already give to Edwin. He's going to have a nice upgrade. And this we're going to give to Anaman and this. Kirina is going to be able to equip herself. And uh, this one is going to be just a ranged kind of backup for Senashira, perhaps. All right, and let us continue. So, not, not with him, but with the final merchant here. Uh, he sells potions, and we can ask uh, about uh, potions from other races that he apparently has. There's nothing better than drow craftsmanship or alchemy, but we also take what we wish from those undeserving. You should know this. <laughs> of course. So anyway, that's that's the potion vendor. He actually has some, some really good selection of potions, and on top of that, two really nice items. Uh, this Rod of Smiting, which is a quarter staff that either kills golems outright or, or deals massive bonus damage to them. So uh, Jahira is going to probably use that. Um, actually, I think this is only for mages, so Senashira might, uh, might use that. Um, when encountering some golems. And here there is a really nice amulet that gives us 10% magic resistance. And once we get especially some other equipment with some magic resistance, we're going to be able to stack them on a certain character and kind of get the benefit of that. Let's get these potions. Now these oils of fiery burning, I am going to take them because they are so rare, but of course we hadn't really had a good opportunity to use them in recent times. Uh, potions of clarity we actually have quite a few as we do as is the case with potions of defense but i'm going to take some of course potions of magic shielding are just incredible so we're going to take all that he has uh, potions of magic protection actually by now we have quite a few of them but anyway just to finish the thought about the fiery potions like potion of fire breath you know we haven't really had a great opportunity to to use them but still i want to have them available uh, because they are considered uh, level zero spells that go through certain types of protections and these potions of fire breath for example actually deal uh, really nice damage so we might get to to use those at uh, some point all right so two more potions of master thievery and the other potions are nice as well but i'm not going to take any more of those we are we are fine with our supplies and i don't want to be too hardcore about our stealing but of course, like I said, uh, this is actually very justified when it comes to our role-playing perspective here, where of course we want to deprive the uh, the drow of as many resources as we can, and just uh, take them for free. All right, and we're going to get our beer uh, gear <laughs> sorted uh, in the or in between episodes, I guess, and uh, this is going to be it uh, for this one. In the next one, we are going to explore the Drow City further and uh, progress in the main storyline. So for now, I thank you for watching, and I'll see you then.